hello everyone welcome back to another video in today's video i'm going to talk about what you should know if you're trying to start a radiologic technology program or x-ray tech program so this is 2025 and what i will say is there has been a lot of changes especially since covid you know around 2019 a lot of programs are either hybrid now meaning you would do some classes online, you know, probably some classes on campus, and then you will also have to do your clinical hours. Another change that I've seen have happened is the HESI exam. Whenever I took my x-ray course back in 2010, I did not have to take the HESI exam, which I started the program in 2012, but I started my basic classes in 2010. I graduated in 2014, but for me to get into the x-ray program, I did not have to take the HESI exam. I know a lot of people are deciding if they can get into a program or not based off the HESI exam. I know some people struggle to score high on that exam. Some people do well and they get in. Regardless, sometimes you may have a problem where it just take a little bit to get into a program. Depending on what area you live in, it may be competitive if there are a lot of radiology students and the program is only taking like a certain amount of students. So that's another change for 2025. Another change that I've seen lately is a lot of Hospitals or clinics do not require you to shield your patients anymore unless the patient is requesting it, if they're pregnant, you know, if you have like a younger pediatric child or if someone is just used to having that shield and they want to have it. So it's been studies and research coming out just saying that the lead apron shield tends to get into the way of the anatomy causing more repeats, and then it also can cause more radiation to the patient. So just check your company, your company policy on that. If you're getting into x-ray school, check with your teacher to see what you have to do um, as far as whenever you're in clinical, do you need to shield your patients or not? Is it a certain age limit um, where you have to shield or stop shielding? Because for me, as I was saying, whenever I did my x-ray program from 2012 to 2014, it was like drilled in our heads that we have to shield patients in order to pass a clinical competency exam. You had to shield your patients. If you didn't, then you just failed that competition competency exam. So if you don't know what that is, pretty much a competency exam is whenever you're in clinic and you're going in and you're showing your teacher or you're showing the x-ray instructor or you're showing the other x-ray tech at the facility that's supervising you that you know how to do these exams by yourself. And of course, there's certain exams that you, you know, have to do in a certain amount of order, depending on when it was taught. So for example, if you are a student in semester one and you're learning a chest and a hand, then you don't have to worry about learning how to take x-rays on the foot in your first semester. It all goes in order, you know, to what you was learned and taught. So um, there are other changes with x-ray. I will um, do a video in a second and just show you all what's on the ART website, which is who I have my license through. I am a radiologic technologist. I know there are um, LMRTs, which are the limited x-ray tags, and then you have the NCTs, which are the non-certified tags. So I will say another challenge may be is that whenever you're going in for your x-ray compasses, especially if you are going for radiologic technologies, a lot of the skull, facial bones, orbits, um, a lot of those nasal bones, a lot of those go to CT now. So it may be a little bit challenging to get some of those head works in, but um, I'm going to look at the ART website with you all, and maybe they have changed some of the requirements where it's not a mandatory requirement now, maybe it's elective. So um, we'll take a look at that. 
Also, let me know if you have any questions about any changes or updates. If you are thinking about X-ray school, if you're thinking about what program is best for you, um, I would say just just go by uh, what you're interested in. Are you interested in getting an associate's degree or you're interested in getting a bachelor's degree? It all depends on what your future goal is whenever you are in X-ray. So, um we will take a look at the x-ray website now, but um, I'm sure this will be helpful for anyone depending on what board exam you're trying to take. So here we go in just a second. Okay, so this is the ART website that I was telling you all about. This is, as you can see, is effective in January of 2022. If there are any new updates, all you have to do is just go to the ART website so as we're scrolling down, we're going to scroll down until we get to the um, clinical portion because um, this part is very important so that you can be very prepared um, or better prepared for what exams you will have to complete, um, what's mandatory, meaning you have to get these exams, what's elective, meaning it's okay if you get these exams or don't get these exams, but I would just try to get as many exams as possible in because you never know, depending on what clinical site you go to next, they may not see a lot of exams. Whenever I was a, a student in clinical one hospital I went to, we did nothing but chest x-rays and abdomen x-rays. So I had to be moved, you know, rotated after that semester because I wouldn't have been able to get hand x-rays, feet x-rays, you know, different things like that. And then they also have check marks on the ART website for different things you can simulate, meaning you can use a mannequin to simulate. Sometimes, um, most of the time, the instructors will let you use a mannequin. I know at my facility, well, the school I went through, we had to use a mannequin. They wouldn't let us use each other because you have to keep in mind if you are using each other, then that person, you know, that other student will probably automatically put their body in the position that you're trying to position them for instead of you doing it from your own memory and knowledge. So uh, we'll look at the chest. The chest is like, you know, full chest x-ray, that's mandatory. So that's something that you have to get in. In x-ray, I haven't seen any changes on. Um, there aren't a lot of chest x-rays coming in. Of course, they still go to CT, but they are still being done in x-ray. A lot of times the doctor will just order a chest x-ray first, especially if a patient is being seen through the ER, then they'll just put in a portable chest or a chest x-ray. And if something is seen on that, or if they just want more information, depending on the patient's condition, or if it's getting worse, then they'll order a CT scan. So chest is still mandatory. Having a wheelchair or stretcher patient for a chest is still mandatory. Your ribs are mandatory. If you cannot get ribs in, then you will have to um, do it under simulation. And then you have your, your other things that's elective, meaning this is something that you get if you get it. If you don't get it, it's not going to stop you from getting certified. So that's what all the check marks are right here for these type of procedures. And then under extremity, you still have your thumb, hand, wrist, forearm, elbow, humerus, shoulder, clavicle being a mandatory exam. I have not seen any student unable to get these exams in. Of course, sometimes you may have to be moved to another facility uh, to get these exams. Your trauma exams will probably mainly come from a hospital setting. And then you have your lower extremity, uh, which is not going all to CT. So it shouldn't be any problem getting these exams in that I'm talking to you about. Um, now let's look at the head. That's what I was telling you about in the previous um, section or video that you, you know, heard me a second ago. So for the head, a lot of these are elective. And then now you see a lot of these can be simulated. So I don't remember in 2012 what was mandatory or elective as far as the head, but I will say 
a lot of this stuff is probably going to CT when it comes to your facial. But recently I have seen students, um, you know, try to do these exams whenever it comes in. If a patient come in and they have um, a nasal bone injury or a skull injury, sometimes whenever sometimes whenever a patient has to have an MRI scan, because I do MRIs as well, if a patient has to have an MRI scan and let's say they have an implant in or an aneurysm clip that they don't know if it's safe or not because the patient doesn't have an implant card, then a lot of times the radiologist will order a skull x-ray clearance or if they have a recent CT scan, they'll look at the CT head image. But if it's not showing the angles that they need to see if it's like any metal or if this will cause the pro um, the patient any problems when they go over to MRI, then they will occasionally order a skull x-ray. So um, that's something to keep in mind. And then um, the spines is not really going to affect x-ray as far as not being able to see those exams in x-ray. A lot of the stuff that's probably hard to get in x-ray is just your facial work, which would be under head. But people are still getting those exams. I would just say when you're in lab or maybe if you're practicing on another student, just do your best in case it comes in and you don't see them as often in clinical. And then here are some floral procedures. Like I was saying, I really don't remember when I did my x-ray program, which was mandatory and which was elective, but it seems like no one is having trouble really getting in the floral exams. So thankfully, most of them or all of them are elective because at the hospital I work at, um, I don't see a lot of sister grounds being done. I see that being done a lot under CT now. And I still see upper GIs being done, small bowel series, your myelograms, your orthograms, things like that are still being done in x-ray. Depending on where um, you're at, you may or may not see any BE studies, you know, your barium enema studies. And you cannot simulate these. These are all have to be done on a real patient if you're able to get them in. Um, but keep in mind, these are elective. So it's not like any one of these is mandatory just in case you can't get those in. And then you still have, um, these are still pretty much standard. All of these are something that you can get in under x-ray. It doesn't automatically go to CT. So, um, well, that's it for this video. If you have any questions, let me know. Those are like just some of the updates for uh, 2025 that I want to just share with you all. But of course, um, if you found this video to be helpful, please give it a thumbs up and I will see you all in the next video. Bye.